Welcome. Thank you for joining us virtually for a press briefing. My name is Kelly Chandler. I'm the Public Health Division Manager for Itasca County. Itasca County is hosting press briefings to highlight themes emerging in our community related to COVID-19 or frequently asked questions posed by our community members. I will start with announcing that Itasca County, along with the State Emergency Operations Center, will be hosting a mass testing event for COVID-19 on September 23rd from 10 to 6 at the Itasca County Fairgrounds. We are part of a statewide initiative to increase testing around the state with the increase in community spread of COVID-19. The National Guard will be assisting us in this endeavor. Um, registration is very recommended as it will allow participants to move through the testing site within a short amount of time. The link for registration will be disseminated via our Itasca County Public Health Facebook page, as well as our local and regional media. We will also put the information on the Itasca County website. This event is open to anyone, regardless of where you live, including out of county, income, insurance, symptom status, or exposure. We encourage anybody wanting a test to participate. Today we will be discussing work sites and employee health and safety. We live in a geographic area with industry that is essential and there is less ability to work remotely than perhaps other areas of the state. Our work sites drive our economy, which is vital to a healthy community. And for employees, their ability to work affects their housing and food security, both which affect overall health and well being. The Minnesota DEED website has information on COVID-19 safety for work sites and employees. The general guidance includes working from home if you are able, masking for employees and patrons of businesses, social distancing of at least six feet apart, not hosting large in-person meetings or gatherings, screening of employees for COVID-19 symptoms prior to entering the work site, and staying home when sick. The guidelines may vary based on work sites and whether or not an employee is considered essential or critical for infrastructure, such as utilities, healthcare, law enforcement, etc., or if a business is in a critical staffing shortage. Our panelists will speak more to this today, and we are joined by Sherry Underland, Senior Certified Professional, Human Resources, Blandin Foundation, and President of the Arrowhead Human Resources Association, and Josh Poudermont, Manager, Employee Labor Relations and HR Systems, Elite Minnesota Power. For the Q&A portion of our briefing, we have Carissa Schultz, Nurse Practitioner from Essentia Health to River, and John Pedersen, Senior Director of Support Services from Grand Itasca Clinic and Hospital. For our local situational update, 256 Itasca County residents have tested positive for COVID-19, and we remain at 13 deaths. The positive case age ranges are six months to 94 years, and cases are mostly community spread from both known and unknown sources. Um, we know that our local COVID-19 case numbers inform decisions made by local school districts on their learning models, whether they're in person, hybrid, or full distance learning. Districts will be looking at the previous 14-day case rate per 10,000 people in Itasca and using this to guide their planning although districts do have the ability to make individual decisions based on what is directly affecting their students and staff. Our 14-day case rate as of Tuesday, September 15th is 9.9. .9. Some of the differences in data released versus the 14-day case rate versus our cumulative data, which we often um, submit in our written updates, is that the 14-day case rate is based on the testing date versus our cumulative, which includes the date that case rates return as positive. This has created some confusion and we certainly acknowledge that, um, but I wanted to address some of the differences in data um, that may be less well understood. Our local and regional media have joined us and after our speakers, we ask that they submit questions via the chat. We'd like you to preface your question with your name and the media organization that you represent and our panel will respond to the questions that pertain to their organization. I would now like to introduce Sherry Undelin, Senior Certified Professional, Human Resources, Blandon Foundation and President of the Arrowhead Human Resources Association. Thank you. Um, question I was posed with is what should employers be thinking about now related to COVID? Um, our main goal should be to keep our employees and communities as safe as possible while keeping our businesses open and functioning during the pandemic. As an employer, we need to be caring and compassionate to our employees 
be transparent about workplace plans and expectations, be prepared to change and adapt, uh, and be nimble to make those changes quickly. COVID impacts each person differently, both professionally and personally. Right now, people across Itasca County are balancing work and personal lives. People have got kids in school, kids doing distance learning, um, loved ones in care facilities, uh, maybe feeling isolated in their own homes. So these and more all impact personal well-being and workplace morale. So it's important that employers be aware of this impact and how it affects their employees. Um, communication is crucial. Uh, make sure employees know what to expect in the current workplace and work environment. Um, communicate the safety measures that are in place and the expectations um, about them, such as signage, directional tape, room capacities. Uh, to help communicate to our staff, we made a building tour video of our office uh, that included the directional tape, signage, and other office changes so that people know what to expect when they do go back into the office. Uh, communicate uh, what expectations are when staff experience symptoms, um, become sick or exposed to COVID. Uh, Minnesota Department of Health obviously has guidance on this. Um, communicate what will happen if there is a potential workplace exposure. Have a plan, uh, but yet be ready to be adaptable. Uh, follow the Stay Safe Minnesota plan, which is the governor's guidance on staying safe for businesses, social and recreational settings. Uh, Part of that plan is to develop a COVID preparedness plan, and there are templates and information on this on the Department of Health site. Likely, most businesses have already developed these. Uh, they just may need updating occasionally. And like Kelly mentioned, under the current phase of the Stay Safe Minnesota plan, if you can telework, you must. Um, some organizations and some positions are able to be productive and efficient while teleworking through technology, cloud-based software, or the nature of specific positions. If teleworking is not an option, um, consider other flexible work arrangements such as uh, staggered hours, uh, phased return, or something that works for you. For those in the workplace, obviously, again, Kelly said, um, make sure you follow the mask mandate, use proper social distancing, Barriers may be able to be put up around workstations and workspaces. Directional tape can help manage traffic flow. And have a plan if an employee tests positive or has been exposed to COVID and have been in the workplace. Um, have a, the plan should include um, notifying staff as appropriate while balancing confidentiality and contact tracing. Now, as cases are rising in our community, kids are back to school, we're likely going to see more absences in the workplace due to COVID. Um, so have a backup plan for staffing. Um, if, if people aren't being able to come to work, have a plan for that. Also, be prepared to implement extra cleaning protocols if there is a workplace exposure. Know your organization's leave options for your employees. Uh, brush up on your current leave and policies, such as FMLA, sick time, paid time off. Um, also, stay current on the new uh, temporary leave laws, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, which allows extra time off for some employees that may be affected by or have family members affected by COVID. Uh, know how that may apply to your organization. And if it does, be prepared to administer that. Uh, there'll be links to several of these references I just mentioned available today. Be nimble, guidance changes often. Uh, the plans, the procedures and protocols that you have in place will likely need to be adapted and updated. We made edits to our preparedness plan and that morning uh, before sending them out to staff, I was online making some final checks and found that the guidelines changed overnight. Um, so they change often, be prepared and be nimble. Uh, so with the goal of keeping our employees and community as safe as possible and keeping our businesses open and functioning during this pandemic, be caring and compassionate to your employees. Uh, be transparent about your workplace plans and expectations. Be prepared to change and adapt and be nimble to change quickly. 
We're all in this together as employers, employees, and community members. And the more we can support each other, uh, the less we'll be collectively impacted by this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And I will now introduce Josh Gudermont, Manager, Employee Labor Relations and HR Systems, Elite, Minnesota Power. Thank you, Kelly. Well, thank you also for inviting, inviting us to join this, this uh, web, webinar this morning. Um, one of the things that I was asked to talk a little bit about is what can employees do or should think about as far as staying safe in the workplace. So as an employee, I know one of the big things for me is just what, what are those expectations from my employer and knowing those and understanding those so that I, I know that when I'm doing my, my daily health screening, whether I'm, it's taking my temperature before coming to work, if that's required, walking through a self health screening assessment, um, knowing that if I'm gonna be on a customer's property and knowing what those, those requirements from the customer may be, all of those are very important things that I wanna know before I leave or before I head out to a customer site. Certainly, uh, if I am having symptoms or if I have been exposed, you know, what's the best way to report that to my employer and how is that information treated? So I, I think Ms. Unlin did a nice job of talking about having, um, having real open communications and things like that. And, and I think that's really important to uh, understand what employees can expect from their employer when they are, are uh, reporting this information. And then if I am ill, what, what happened? You know, what, what is the sick time um, procedure policy, who do I report that to, and, and how do I, can, do I have to be concerned about pay continuation and things like that. So brushing up on those sick leave policies, time off policies, maybe there are special considerations for COVID-19 cases. You know, all of those things are really important, I think, for employees to try to understand and be, be prepared in case, um, in case you catch COVID-19 or, or if COVID-19 strikes your, your family. Um, certainly one of the things that I also think about is really, you know, as I am in the office or on job sites, you know, what am, what am I doing or what can I do uh, be in control of as far as protecting myself? So uh, obviously monitoring for symptoms is very important, but also cleaning my work areas, cleaning those shared spaces, cleaning my office, cleaning a conference room or a piece of equipment or things like that. And are there special procedures or rules or different things that I need to be aware of if I'm going to be cleaning and, and where do I find the supplies and who, who restocks it and all those things that, that can be really important to ensure that we're we're keeping those work areas as safe as possible to help prevent the spread of those germs. Um, how do I know if one of my coworkers has been sick? So that communications plan, uh, again, Ms. Unlin talked about that. I think that's really important that, you know, I understand uh, as an employee if I've been exposed as well and then how, how is my employer gonna communicate that to me? Uh, I also think about some of the things, 2020 has been very difficult as far as just personal um, personal events and things that we like to do outside of work. But certainly some of that stuff can lead us into areas where we may get exposed and you know how, how uh, attending some of those events may impact my work life if I were to pick up COVID-19 and bring that back. Certainly an impact to a small facility or a small work site would be pretty consequential if, if uh, someone were to report there and spread spread COVID-19 through that. So thinking about my personal choices outside of work, as challenging as that can be, as we've all had to endure through this pandemic, but you know, we're all in this together, as, as Ms. Unlin said, and I, I would absolutely agree with that, that you know, it's hard to think about maybe that special trip that we've waited for for a couple of years and having postponed it, but the consequences of going and maybe getting uh, exposed are, are pretty difficult to, to uh, reconcile, bring back to a workforce. And the last thing I would uh, just leave with is just how, what, if I do get sick, what's my return to work? What does that all look like? You know, if I'm thinking about, you know, my pay and, and my job and you know, how, does it impact my job and things like that, you know, really having those, those candid conversations up front to say, all right, you know, if this happens, you know, what can, what can I expect as an employee? 
you know, and maybe there is some remote work that can be done. Maybe there's some staggered shifts, that's critical infrastructure. There, there are things that I know internal to our company that we've tried to work with employees on and, and really, you know, be flexible as an employer, but also, you know, asking a lot of our employees just to um, work with us as well on that. So, so that's what I have. Kelly, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I do want to add, I didn't mention it in the beginning, um, there's been a significant amount of confusion we're hearing about return to work. So Josh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, there's been some protocols um, by some work sites that have required a negative test to return. And what we know about the virus is it you can shed the virus and show up positive for up to three months after when you wouldn't be considered infectious. And that's um, something that's been confusing that we've been trying to reiterate to work sites that that shouldn't be the criteria um, going with the, the 10 days from either the start of symptoms or the positive test date and um, not having fever for 24 hours without fever reducing medication and having improvement of symptoms um, would be the appropriate um, return to work. And we just wanted to make sure that um, for those employers and employees listening that um, we have this um, up-to-date information. And now we will move to the question and answer portion. And we have our first question from Kathy Lynn from KOZY. Um, I've seen some half mask plastic pieces being used as a mask in the workplace. Do they qualify as a mask? So you're referring to face shields. And in some situations, um, face shields aren't exactly the same for protection as masks. However, there are there is some guidance on the Minnesota Department of Health website about the ability to use face shields um, instead of masks. And the recommendation is that the mask um, covers down below your mouth and that it curves to the side so droplets from your nose and mouth can't escape. That is the um, recommended um, face shield protocol if a mask cannot be worn. Um, all right, we've heard of businesses keeping a bowl of suckers handy, telling employees when one comes in, pop a sucker in your mouth because it looks like you're eating. Um, that's a um, great question and I'm actually, I personally couldn't speak to that. I haven't heard from it. So I'm going to open that up to our panelists. I don't know if John or Carissa have heard of that or Josh or Sherry, do you know of employers um, um, doing that? So if you're eating that, um, I'm assuming that you're going to, then you don't have to wear your mask because you're eating or drinking because that is one of the, um, the guidelines. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? I've, I've not heard of that. Um, obviously, I would not encourage that. Um, it's just, um, you would want to be examples of safe work practices. And um, I would think if, if somebody needed to, um, I would think that the, the lunch breaks or something would happen separately. Um, but nope, I have not heard of that. <laughs> It's Josh, I, I second that. I, I have not heard of that either. Uh, certainly something we would not encourage or condone in any of our workplaces. So that's, that's a little troubling. Yeah, so I would add that yes, um, there have been concerns raised by our community about adherence to the mask mandate. Um, it um, you know, has certainly um, been um, communicated to us that there's concern about that and safety um, when people are out in the community. Um, and yes, eating and drinking is one um, way to, um, that you cannot have to wear a mask. But I know in schools, for example, you can't necessarily eat out of a designated area just for that. You can't be taking off your mask on and off. So perhaps as an employer, this is just one suggestion, but just having eating and drinking in a certain area or away from others to not get away from that mask mandate and put others' safety um, as a concern. Other questions um, from our media?
Okay, I am seeing no other questions, so we will end this press briefing early. Thanks so much. At Grand Rapids State Bank, we've been a trusted financial advisor to our customers since 1914. We're local, community bankers who understand what it takes to manage a business through thick and thin. Grand Rapids State Bank, your community bank, serving people throughout the Northland.